Freedom from thought domination. What does this mean? Have you ever had one of those nights when you're trying to go to sleep and the mind just keeps running and running, racing in every direction? No matter what you try to do, you can't find the stop button, you can't find the turn off switch, and you just toss and turn in the body, uh, kind of reflective of what your mind is doing, tossing and turning in the mind. Well, I think we've all had that, but you know, there's a lot more subtle ways that our minds run away and our thoughts dominate our lives. In fact, most of the time we aren't even aware when our mind is racing hither and yon or our mind is cluttered with uh, chatter and it just keeps, 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 keeps chattering. And uh, for some of us, it's been such a, uh, a continual thing in our lives, uh, such a habitual thing, such an ongoing practice, we're not even aware that we're living in a totally different world inside our head. And this is really, really a problem. The good thing is, when you wake up and begin to see what you've been doing, you're on your way to freedom. And now, it doesn't seem like that. You become, most of the time, uh, upset at yourself. You know, why did I let my mind run on and on and on like that? What What is wrong with me? Well, it goes back to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve partook of that fruit that God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of that tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, when we learned knowledge of good and evil, started learning that kind of knowledge, we fell from living in the spiritual dimension where there is life and peace into the mental dimension. We got overactive minds. And the beautiful thing is, part of what Christ died to provide for us is to free us from these uh, heavy, cluttered minds, these chatterboxes in the head, this what if and if only, and it, I shouldn't have type of thinking that the mind loves to do in us. It really does a job on us. It's no wonder that Paul t said that the, the carnal mind, the mind of the flesh, is what the Greek says. Uh, the Bible in basic English is one of the few versions that actually translates it correctly. The mind set on the flesh produces death. But the mind set on the spirit produces life and peace. Right there in Romans chapter 8. Life and peace. It isn't the kind of mind that is conditioned with all that old momentum. And there are a lot of different kinds of momentums that get people going in the head. And Christians are not immune from this. Now you can assume that people that have not made efforts toward God are people that are completely dominated by this kind of mind and they think it's normal life they live totally by their wits so to speak and they are unaware that the mind that they're listening to is actually being a mind that is being driven by darkness and by evil by separation from God but you come to the Lord and you receive a new birth experience and in that wonderful born-again experience, you think, hey, everything is so new now. And you sense that newness. A lot of Christians refer to it as their honeymoon time with the Lord. That, that freedom, that delight, that uh, different perspective on life, everything that goes on in life, 
you've got a much different perspective and a clarity of thinking and operating in the world and it's just so much different from the way that you had lived before but it isn't very long before you begin to feel old things re-entering old thought patterns old mental habits things of the past and just wrong ways of thinking and looking at life and this is why we find that Paul emphasizes renewing the mind in several places and what the renewing of the mind is is actually a reconditioning of the mind what it is is a uh, beginning to see from the spirit's point of view rather than from the soul's point of view 